Hey everyone, this is your favorite radio host, your only radio host and favorite girl, of course, Corinne Lafont, broadcasting to you from the beautiful island of Trinidad and Tobago on Between the Lines. And you know, I always start my show off being thankful. I'm always grateful. I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm excited to be here. My morning should have started way earlier. I was supposed to get up this morning and wash six o'clock. I had an alarm set and of course that went off and I took it off and then I went on again at a 6.30 alarm and that went off and I took it off and I'm like, whatever, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm just so thankful. I mean, to be able to just allow time and the clock to tick away and, you know, you just can't, there, there will always be something to do. There will always be something to do, but just to lie in bed and appreciate life and, and, and to know that you're alive, you're breathing, you're seeing, you're, you have new mercies, new blessings, new everything. It, 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 it just amazes me. And I'm like, that can be done another time. That can be done later. I could do it after. I mean, why do I need to rush it with in the morning? Or do I prefer that? But yeah, I mean, whatever. Just be grateful. Just be grateful for everything, good and bad. That's happening. And it's not bad. It's not so good. I prefer to say not so good. Yeah. So I have a beautiful woman online with me. And guess where she is? She's in London. Yeah. And I'm in the Caribbean. And I can relate so much to her because my family is in London. So I'm used to the accent. My cousin who uh, lived in London for all of his, his life. Sorry. He's now in Trinidad and Tobago with me. You know, I mean, he's into the in Tobago, the other island that's connected to us, our sister isle. So when I hear him speak, he's like, oh, I'm like, oh my God, aren't you dropping that accent? <laughs> and then, of course, knowing that I lived in Jamaica for, for 21 years, he's like, why don't you drop your accent? I'm like, <laughs> it's so much fun. So let me tell you a bit about Claire Turner Marshall. She sent me this sweet short bio today, but we're going to get more into her a little later. So Claire Turner Marshall is one of those people you meet in life that makes you stand back and look. She does. She's beautiful. Look at every aspect of your life and question why in a really great way. Having had a journey of self-discovery and having many challenges as well as magical experiences along the way. She calls herself lifeist, experiencist, and an energist. And yes, she did invent all those words. That's the beauty of language. Her journey out of the corporate world and to being who she truly is today will have you on the edge of your seat with laughter, tears, and everything in between. You will leave feeling ready and brave enough to take on the world with some how to do it too. And today we're discussing, I did it my way. That's re that really encompasses Claire's life, which you will hear about and, and you know what she's going to be sharing with you. So welcome, Claire, to Between Thanks. the Lines. It is absolutely wonderful to be here. Thank you for having me on, Corrine. Yes, it's great to have you. So let's jump right into it. I did it my way. What did you do your way, Claire? Eh? What did you do your way? I did life so far my way. Um, I, I'm the youngest of three children, and I always think that the youngest is a bit of a rebel. Mm -hmm. um, and a bit of a kind of break the mold, do everything differently to the older two because you just can because you are that youngest, um, youngest vibe of the family. Mm -hmm. And you know, I I came from a very and come from a very opinionated, a very political family actually. So I think that speaks volumes mm -hmm. about my family that you know they are very opinionated. They're very staunch in their opinions. They are really quite judgmental people. Wow. And you know, for me, I um I tried really hard to do it their way for quite a while. <laughs> and um and I you know you said in in the the intro about me to start off with, you know, there's been some magical things, but there's also been some challenges and you know, the challenge started for me really at the age of 29 when I had a mental breakdown. Wow. And the breakdown came purely as a result of doing it everybody else's way and mm -hmm. not doing it Claire's way. Mm -hmm. And so since then, I'm now 43. I celebrated my 43rd birthday last week. Yay! Um, thank you. I, um, I've been on very much a road of, of discovering me mm -hmm. and of discovering who I was because when I said 
you know, it, you know, I did it their way. I even ended up doing a job that I did purely because I thought that that would make my family happy. Yeah. Never once actually considering my own happiness in all of it. Yeah. So for me, it was about living Claire's vibe and it is now very much about living Claire's vibe and, and unconditionally and unleashed and in a very, very wild and, and Claire way. So tell me now, Claire, how are you relating with your family? You're doing it your way compared to their way. What did you face in terms of that? Um, it was kind of very much, you know, there was a, it wasn't a case of within work, it was about kind of getting a job and, and doing that kind of thing because my parents were actually very entrepreneurial. My dad um, is a very entrepreneurial man. They're very hard workers. Um, but it was kind of very much about... Um, I don't know if it's something that you you have very much um, in your part of the world, Kareem, but very much kind of a, a British thing is about, you know, um, just agreeing with things to pay lip service to them. And because you wouldn't want to upset the apple cart and you wouldn't possibly want somebody to be offended. And, you know, it, you know, British way is, you know, to like not complain about it up front, but then afterwards go and complain about it a lot. And so, you know, very much the way that I was taught in my family was that, you know, you just kind of put up and shut up and you just do it because that's the way it's got to be done. Yeah. And, you know, for me, it caused a huge amount of, um, of self-sabotage in yeah. doing things like that because I wasn't doing things that were aligned with the way that I wanted to do them. Mm. And also a really huge part of it for me is I'm a massively spiritual person and I didn't come from a particularly spiritual family. Mm. Um, I actually came from quite a, a mixed, um, you know, a mixed belief system in that, you know, my dad um, is um, an atheist. My mum was agnostic. Wow. Um, we went to Sunday school because we grew up in a very, very small little village. So we went and did the church thing on Sunday yet, you know, God wasn't something that we believed in really in our house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'd got this thing as I called it at the time when I was younger that I used to kind of very much, what I now know was going into my higher self was kind of hearing and, and understanding things on a different level to, to what the people around me were, but I had no idea what it was. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what spirituality was then. Nobody had ever really talked to me about the universe. Nobody had ever kind of really talked to me about, you know, thoughts becoming things and you, mm -hmm. you, you become what you project. And so for yeah. me, um, you know, I did it their way because it was the only way I knew, but I always kind of knew there was something different and there was something yeah. that I couldn't quite put my finger on. And it wasn't until in my early twenties, a friend of mine had been traveling and um, she came back and it was a, it was a girl that I'd been to school with and that we'd been really good friends at school. We'd separated when we were teenagers because as soon as I left school, I um, had a, a most amazing opportunity in my life and I went and lived in the USA for 12 months as an international exchange student so we've kind of gone off and taken our separate paths and then we met up and she gave me the Celestine prophecy and she said this is a really great book I think you'll really like this mm -hmm. and I read this book and it was like coming home oh. it was like all of a sudden I actually was like oh now I know what this thing's been all of my life now I'm starting to understand more about it and so from there it was very much building towards where I am now but that was a, a real integral part of where the breakdown came from because it started to teach me that there was more to life than what I was living and than what I thought was there mm. and when I started to break away from that I, it was met with a massive amount of resistance from <laughs> my family because yeah. all of a sudden Claire wasn't the person that she had been yes yes resistance i'm hearing a number of things the mental breakdown i'm listening to you and i'm i'm seeing the way how things evolve and you know what's running through my mind claire is that you know and i tell people nothing happens by by chance or coincidence it's meant to happen Absolutely. and the fact that you went to the us you saw your friend you know you 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 were able to reconnect everything the timing the timing of everything, her putting that book into your hand allowed you to find the answers that you were searching for because you, you, was, you were asking the universe subconsciously for something and you didn't know where to look, where to find it. And then she came with it and that started your journey. And that is how life is. But a lot of people are not aware, are not conscious of these things. 
And, you know, when I say about aware and conscious, as I mentioned it, you know, people say, I am aware, I'm conscious. I know that's, that's a dog walking past there. I know that I'm alive. That's not the awareness and consciousness I'm talking about. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a surface surface thing where yes you have eyes in the socket of your head and you can see and yes you can hear those are just functional you know physical things when i say awareness and conscious a deeper level of spirituality that you connect is like you you hear you see beyond you know beyond your eyes beyond your ears beyond the form of the body you, you, you're so aware, you're connecting things, you're asking for things, you're talking about things, you're, you're seeing lessons from things and circumstances that people are like, why do you always go so deep? You know, they'll be like, why do you always, they, they will question, why you just can't leave it as what it is? You can't because your mind, your, your, your persona, your spirituality is seeing much more yeah. than the surface. So people are aware, yeah, they're walking around, they put one foot in front of the other, they know to cross the street, don't cross when the cars are coming, yeah, you're aware of that. But hello, there's much more to just putting one foot in front of the other and knowing when to cross the street. So this, yeah, this is, this is the thing I'm seeing with you. And, and I want to come back to that mental breakdown. You said at 29, that's a pretty young age. What mm -hmm. it is that that caused that caused that? Really, really simply, um, mm -hmm. me trying to be everything to everybody else and not mm -hmm. actually serving myself. Hmm. So it, there were a culmination of different events that led up to it. And, you know, and before I, I talk about those, I just want to say that, you know, I cannot agree with you more about um you know everything in life happens for a reason and there, and i personally totally agree with you there is no such thing as a coincidence no. you know the universe has us go on this path and you know particularly the last seven years of my life um if you imagine kind of the craziest hollywood movie that you've ever seen and you, <laughs> you imagine that one way you go no no that didn't happen that's been my life kind of, you know, you know, on, on acid even yeah. more over the last <laughs> seven years because there've been times where I've kind of sat there and gone, really? Like, really? Really? Universe? Really? <laughs> really? Um, yeah, really? Um, but, you know, it all started. And, and the great thing about when I was 29 and, and, and what happened there and kind of for me, which was the, 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 the it was, you know, it was where the seed was planted and, and I, you know, started to harvest it. And now I've been, I'm nourishing the growth of the seed and it's growing into something that it was always meant to be. But it was me never putting myself first. Hmm. Um, I ended up going into a family business that I went into purely to save my sister because she'd got to the point where it was all getting too much for her. You know, it was something that was kind of on the side for all of us and, the person that was kind of the dominant in control of it, um, I didn't know at the time, but I now know um, is a very narcissistic person. Yeah. So it didn't matter what any of us did, it was never going to be what she, she wanted. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We were saying exactly what she wanted, it was mm. never going to work. Yeah. And so, you know, I kept going, I kept going, I pushed, I pushed, I pushed, I pushed, I pushed. Mm. And then I literally got to the point where I couldn't do it anymore. And I was actually destroying myself. Exactly. So, you know, it was born from, you know, I now know looking back, it was born from the universe saying, right, the only way that we're going to teach you about this is through experience. Yeah. Because I'm a huge, huge um, advocate that, you know, we can't really teach somebody something anywhere near as effectively unless we've walked that path ourselves. Yeah. And unless, you know, like I sadly lost my mum a few years ago and, you know, for me to talk about how that feels and, and how you actually feel when that's happened, hmm. it's so difficult to talk to anybody whose mum is still here on this plane because yeah. you just don't get it. You, you don't you get it. Yeah. understand how it feels and, and and it's so difficult to articulate in words mm. to somebody you know what it actually feels like for the person that created you not to be here anymore yeah and so for me it was about you know the universe kind of you know pushing me to the point where i had to stop 
because actually I was going to totally break myself and have a complete, you know, psychotic breakdown. Yeah. I mean, I said I had a mental breakdown because it was, I just mentally couldn't deal with anything, couldn't cope with what was going on. For quite a while afterwards, I was in a really angry place. And I, I can actually remember sitting downstairs in my home where I am now with my aunt. And she said to me, she said, you know, you're so very angry, Claire. And I said, yeah, because you know what? At the moment, I want to be angry. Mm -hmm. and when I'd said it at the time, I was in a real place of turmoil. But when I look back now, whereas a lot of people would look on that and see that as being um, something really negative, mm -hmm. you know, I always say now, I say to my clients, I say to the people that I work with, I say a lot on the stuff that I share on social media, it's got to come up to come out. Yeah. And you've got to release that energy. You've got to release what is going on for you to actually be able to deal with it. So whilst at the time I had many people still around me, especially family members, saying to me, okay, you know, this is not good and, you know, you, you've got to deal with this and you shouldn't be like this. Actually, I was dealing with it. I was dealing with it in the best way for me. And that was the start of the change where, you know, a lot of those family members are no longer in my life now. And that is really sad. But then I'm also a great believer that, we have people in our life for a reason, a season or a lifetime. That's right. Sometimes the people that you think are going to be there for a lifetime aren't there for a lifetime. Nope. And then, you know, sometimes this, you know, this, I, I believe with all of them, it's very much about there is a lesson in there for us to learn. Yeah. And whether it is a season where it is just a reason where they come in and go out really, really quickly, there's always something for you to learn. And whatever it is that you learn ultimately will make you wiser and help help you to be wiser and well actually you know for me it's created a person and it's created a, a woman that is here to seriously empower other women and help them and say do you know what you've got this and it's okay and actually you know what in the moment where you're sitting there and you're on your knees and you actually think it couldn't get any worse and then it does and you you know you question how am I going to get through this you know if you have faith and you trust in the universe and you trust that the universe has has got this, then ultimately you will always, you know, carry on that journey and there will be as much magic as there is challenge. Yeah, yeah. You're echoing the words that I say every day and you're echoing, echoing the experiences that I still have today and on the journey. So we're on the same journey and I find myself attracting the same, you know, the, the kind of people to my show that are on that journey, have been through that journey you know, and have reached a certain point because it's always a work in progress. Absolutely. You know, you never stop. It's always a work in progress. And, you know, I, I keep coming back to the mental breakdown. I mean, you said that it was a, it, it's really a cognitive dissonance that was happening to you. It, it was, I'm, I, I'm pleasing other people on this end, but this is not who I am. And I'm seeing that there's a gap and I'm having an, a, a, a serious problem trying to close that gap. What yeah. the hell is going on? And there are some people, I'm coming back to the awareness and conscious thing again. Some people are going through things and they are not aware that they are having a psychotic breakdown. They just have emotions going through anger, bitey. You know, I, I, want, I, want, I want you to kind of jump in here and kind of express some of the, the things that people may be feeling during a psychotic breakdown, but not aware that they're having they're having a breakdown. What are some of the things that you, that manifested through you, uh, for you to be, for you to be aware that you were having a breakdown? It was, it was the anger. It was the stress. It was not being able to deal with like seemingly simple things mm -hmm. in, in my personal life. What was really interesting about that time is I, I've, I've been self-employed. I've worked for myself. I've run my own business um, for the last eight years. I was self-employed prior to that for um, 12 years. So working for myself was something that I was never a stranger to. And interestingly, the place where I worked as a contractor, nobody actually knew what was going on. And mm. that was, you know, that was kind of, you know, again, that wasn't healthy but it was my work was the thing that kept me functional and kept me focused and actually kept me, you know, sane to a certain degree because I didn't actually start working. I took a few days off because I could, because I could just 
call in and say, look, you know, can you cancel my appointments? I'm not going to be around today. Mm -hmm. And they do that. But what actually happened and how it manifested in my work was anger mm. and was when I didn't get, when things weren't going the way that I wanted them to go, mm. I would totally lose my temper. Yes. I would intimidate people because that was my way of actually dealing with it. But then simultaneously, I was always really good at kind of apologizing for that and, you know, and, and being kind to people as well. So when I talked to people that were in my life at that time and I talk about how I was, they say, oh, I don't ever, ever really remember you being like that. Because mm -hmm. I almost used to kill with kindness mm -hmm. what I've done that wasn't great. And so, you know, for me, it was about, you know, taking my frustration out. You know, I would, I would get really angry about things. I, I remember going and standing in the garden and screaming a lot because <laughs> it was a way to actually release what was there. But it was also then how I treated people that were the closest to me, you know, with my mum. I didn't treat her always a way that I am now proud of mm -hmm. because, you know, they say, don't they, that, you know, we hurt the people that we love the most because we can, because they love us unconditionally anyway. Mm -hmm. Yet, you know, there were occasions when I, you know, I treated my mum in a way that, you know, I can't change it now. I can't go back and change it. No. But I can learn from it and know that I won't do that again. And so, you know, I almost kind of in, in one box, I was just getting on with it. I was doing the work thing. I was living my life. And then in another box, when I came home, how, how I kind of cut pen, cut mentalized my life in the other box I was kind of falling apart and trying to build myself back up again and one of the most powerful things that I did at that time was I got a coach um, I went to go and see a counsellor because um, I you know I, I needed somebody to kind of tell me that it was okay for me to be hurt which I was mm -hmm. but then what I didn't want to do was I didn't want to dwell on what had happened I wanted to learn about why it had happened Mm -hmm. and so you know one of the things that one of the ways again that I started to deal with it was by starting to learn about me I started to learn about my mind I started to learn about you know how my brain actually functioned why I was this way that I was I then started to learn more about the universe and kind of the power of spirituality and the power of you know what you bring into your life and the power of your experiences and so for me it, it you know in in some ways it was kind of quite crazy because on the face of it everything looked like it was absolutely okay right. yeah but if you were you know if you were clever enough and in tune enough and, and have the knowledge yeah. to read into me at that time you would have known that actually I was still an explosion waiting to happen um, <laughs> in that I was exploding into the new way that I was doing my life and the new way that I was doing everything. Yeah. How has things changed for you now that you're doing it your way in terms of relationships, in terms of your life? You know, um, give us a sort of comparison, the clear then, the clear now. You know, what, what, what's, I'm sure it's better for you. You know, I can yeah, so yeah, that, much better. What, what's 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 different? What you know, and and how you feel knowing yourself? What you know, the you now compared to the you back then, the pleaser, the doer, the you know, living everybody else's life within the, their frame. Now you're frameless. No, there's no boxing. There's no nothing. Yeah. Oh, so now the boxing and the frames disappeared and all those constraints have disappeared and I have unleashed myself. Right. The big difference now is that I trust my inner guide yeah. that I didn't do back then. Um, yeah. I trust my inner guide and actually I say what I think. Yeah. I will be mindful of not trying to hurt people's feelings and because you know I've, I've always been quite an opinionated person and mm -hmm. um, whereas before I would have you know the, the big difference now is before I would have argued with you until you agreed with me mm -hmm. now I kind of say well that's what I think and if you agree great and if you don't agree great you know, <laughs> yeah. honestly, I'm, you know, I'm not here to convince you. Okay. You've asked me my opinion. I've given you my opinion. Mm -hmm. And if you agree with it, well, then that's wonderful. And if you don't, well, then obviously you've got your own opinion and you've got that to start off with. Yeah. And I think that is the biggest, biggest difference is now I'm comfortable in my own skin. Yeah. I don't have fear of what people are going to do, say and react. And, and also 
I don't have a fear of people no longer being in my life. Ah. Because actually, you know, like when my mum passed away, um, me and my brother, you know, I, I do know what happened, but I kind of look at it and I, and I still am a bit, a little bit like, you know, I don't really get why it went like that for him but he's then very controlled by somebody else. So he doesn't have his own mind, but mm. you know, my brother's no longer in my life. And initially, you know, it was hurtful and it was sad because losing my mum was, you know, was a massive, massive thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I also learned to accept that actually he was never going to accept me for the person that I was and always right. wanted to change me into somebody that I wasn't. Let it go. Realized is that when I was around him, I ended up being somebody that I wasn't to please him. Yeah. And so, you know, now the Claire that lives in the world now is, uh, well, you know, this is what I think. I'm going to say it to some of you with love and others of you, I'm just going to say it how I see it. Yeah. Yeah. And actually I can, I can go to bed and I can sleep at night and it yeah. doesn't, doesn't harm my energy. It doesn't affect my life because you know what you you know i've learned how people can be so very controlling yeah. and how they can be so dominant on wanting you to do things their way and if you don't do that well then you know they will continue to meet it with resistance yeah. and i've learned more than anything that actually that's not not who i came here to be exactly exactly we're in a highly narcissistic society claire I don't know if you realize that, and it's growing more and more. Yes. I, I don't understand what, why and what is causing it, um, the perpetuation of things, the media. Well, I, 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 I am into media, meaning this, but I don't watch TV, radio. I am very, yeah. I, I, and some people might say, Corinne, how can you be surviving like that? You need to know. Why do I need to know? Why? Yeah, totally. And you know, it's, it, and it is, because, I mean, you probably won't know about this because of, um, or too much about it because of uh, exactly what you've just said. But, you know, obviously here in the UK, we've got a major thing happening at the moment with Brexit. And mm -hmm. we've got like, this major situation happening with us trying to break away from Europe. And, you know, I don't know a huge amount about what's going on with it um, because I choose exactly the same exactly. as you do not watch it you know I, I do watch a little bit of tv you know i, I quite like master chef because i get of a course. few tips about of course. And, it. <laughs> of um, course. And, and um and we have a thing here called strictly come dancing and um, dancing with the stars and I you're love on your that. side of i love yeah, that yeah because it's a bit of escapism and I was a dancer when I was younger so for me it's you know it's kind of filling um, a need um, within me but you know on the whole I don't for the same reason that you say yeah. and I, I actually think that it's it uh, again what's happened here in the UK and and this is not me talking about this from a political perspective this mm. is me talking about this from a, a literal kind of black and white this is what has happened yeah. um you know we've had um, a lot of you know we've had a lot of um change because of austerity measures in this mm. country in the last few years and one of the things that has happened is our policing has been dramatically reduced. Mm -hmm. And so now, because there are very little consequences of you doing something deemed to be wrong, mm -hmm. we've got this whole generation of, of children that are, you know, that, that don't have boundaries. Mm -hmm. And that because, you know, again, I mean, I, I've got a little girl, I was 39 when I had my little girl. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a completely different parent to what I would have been had I had my daughter a long time ago. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that it's about instilling those boundaries. That's and I right. think too many parents that are role models that don't see themselves as role models mm. and that are not instilling those boundaries and that are not actually guiding their children yeah. so they're watching kind of some of the crazy stuff on youtube and and you know because the world that we live in today is so much more at the tip of your fingers than it was you know when i was younger that I, I kind of feel like we've got this whole narcissistic generation because nobody's actually kind of giving them guidance and encouraging them to have good values and to have, you know, positivity and love for their fellow human beings. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, is, you know, there was only a report 
um, that I did catch. My husband had got the news on and I caught a report over the weekend um, where there was a rugby player here in the UK who had actually been assaulted on the street for being gay. Um, you know, because he, he came out and said, look, this is who I am. And, you know, and I kind of hate that whole thing of coming out. You know, why can't we just be who we want to be? You know, yeah. it, you know there are not. And, and I kind of I say, why isn't there not? I kind of feel like what you and I are doing, Corrine, is mm -hmm. we, we are actually... You know, I discovered many years ago that I was a light worker and that I was here to help change the conscious evolution of this planet. And that's very much who you are. And that's what exactly. you're doing. And I think that it's by us doing this, whilst the narcissistic generation in one respect is growing, mm -hmm. I actually think the generation of conscious people like us is growing at a bigger rate. Of course. And so, you know, we're going to, we are going to, we're going to overcome them we in the, the respect that we're going to come back to what life is all about and we are the light we are the light claire and you cannot yeah. you cannot dim the light no matter how or even out it you might dim it you might dim it but you cannot out a light that is meant to be a light yeah. you cannot yeah. and in terms of the, the narcissistic society i'm thinking to myself people are become feeling that they are more entitled and the ego the false self is becoming more it's growing more and more in that environment and it's like i have to fight for what i want i have to get what i want and it's all about what i want and and you are not going to stop me from getting this and i'm going to do whatever it takes you know to, to to get what i want so that's the kind of things that are perpetuating even in jobs even in families it's like a constant fight and it's it, 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 it feeds that, that animal, that, that false yeah. self. I am, not, I am not an egoistic person. I've never been. I don't talk about myself, really. I would be, people will never know the accomplishments I have. They, yeah. have to, they have to ask me something, and then if they ask me, I, might, I may say, and if I say, they'll be like, wow, or they may go and Google me, and they will say, Corinne, I never knew all of that. I'm like, yeah, yeah. You know, because, because I am not defined by that. Yeah. I don't define myself by that. I just want to be, I tell people simply, just call me Corrine. Just yeah. deal with me. Just, yeah. this is who I am. I, and, yeah. and I might behave out of, if they knew the things that I've accomplished, they might say, they, might, they will put me in a box and think I'm supposed to behave in this particular way because I've I don't want that. I want to no. be me jumping up and down, having fun. Don't limit me. You know, don't tell me just because I've done this, I'm supposed to behave this way. Hell no. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, and, be, yes. Yeah. And you know, that's one of the interesting, that's, uh, that's another point you, you've kind of brought it to the forefront about the big difference between who I was then and who I am now. I did used to be the ego person. Mm. I did used to be that person because that was what I was taught. That was mm -hmm. how you were surrounded in it. You were surrounded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And basically, you know, part of the becoming unincorporated and kind of me getting to where I am now was massively around me actually losing the ego. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and, and I had to go on a big downward turn with money as well because, you know, I had a lot of money in my life. I pretty much did what I wanted. I bought mm -hmm. things. You know, not because necessarily, uh, you know, I like nice things. I still love things, of nice course. things. I still love expensive things. But, you know, I bought them back then for the wrong reasons. Mm. I bought them back then because of the label that was on them and because of what people were going to think, think when they saw that. I didn't buy it because it was lovely and it was nice and it was what That's I wanted. That's right. That's right. And so, you know, a big part of the journey for me was about changing that yeah. and actually realizing it wasn't until you know the universe took it all away and it was all gone <laughs> that I was kind of like okay then so yeah that's not important <laughs> thanks for the lesson I'm not gonna lie it was a really important one but it was bloody tough along the way to learn yeah. it yeah. you see that's the thing the universe sees who you really are yeah God the universe source who, you know whatever we want to give it give a name to but it knows who you really are meant to be. And it's going to do everything possible to put things in your way or put you in things way or circumstances for you to see who you're really meant to be. So right. you could have easily become a narcissist easily because yeah. you were surrounded. 
you grew up in the environment, this is what it is. You could have easily, but there was something within you that was fighting. And, and this is where the breakdown happened. When you're not supposed to be what, <laughs> when you're not supposed to be something that other people are trying to make you into, you're going to have that struggle. You're going to have that struggle. And it's you to decide. You had to decide Am I going to give in to this? Because you could have done that. There are people who do it. They are not strong yeah. enough. They are not strong enough. And they give in. They give in to that sort of behavior, attitude, personality disorder, and not try to pursue the other side for fear of being different, Claire. For yeah. fear of the resistance. Oh my God, I may lose my family. Nobody's going to talk to me. I, 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 my friends, you know, what would people think? You go through that. You you know you're going to be living a lonely, <laughs> alone sort of life where you may, and it's not lonely for a very long time, mind you. But at, at the time you're thinking it, you're thinking, oh my God, nobody is going to understand me. Nobody's going to want to be around me. Nobody's going to be want to be friends with me because I'm going to be different and I need to fit in. <laughs> and this yeah. is the conversation the ego is trying to, to have in your head to make you conform because it will do whatever it takes that ego to keep to to, to keep itself within you to survive yeah. and that's oh it and like God. you know as you say is that's totally the ego talking and it takes yeah. that it takes that courage it takes that bravery it takes a strength that you know it, it's a sentence that i use quite well not a sentence it's it's a sentiment and it's it's something that i say so often now that you know, when my mum got poorly and, and, you know, she got poorly kind of very, very quickly and, 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 and suffered a very, very horrific end to her life. And, you know, I held her hand as she passed over from this world and I talked her to the next world. And, you know, had I not been through everything I've been through, I wouldn't have been able to do that. But I say that I learned about an inner strength that I didn't even know existed, let alone that I possessed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think the, the thing is, is everything that you've just described is, you know, because we are so trapped in that mind, because we are so trapped in that life and that habitual pattern, we don't actually, we can't see the other side of fear. And actually, you know what, you end up not being lonely. I mean, I've got some oh. of the most amazing friends now that I would yeah. never have had. Yeah. had I not made that leap and had I not done things differently and you know my entire life I've been different my entire <laughs> life you know, when I was younger because I was you know I lived my parents were were working class people worked really really hard you know they did very well for themselves they made a lot of money and the school that I went to you know everybody knew who I was and everybody knew where I lived and I was the rich kid Absolutely. and you know, I was always different in that I never actually saw myself as that I just saw myself as well you know I'm, I'm Claire you know I'm me I, I don't know what's <laughs> yeah. different about me you know we all go to the bathroom every day you know yeah. we all we do, we do the same things every day I don't really know what it is that I do that you don't yeah. but you know, I got labeled as different and I got I had people that hated me that had never even had a conversation with me this is what happened yeah of yeah. what they thought I represented. And then when they spoke to me, the amount of times I had people say to me, oh, actually, you're really nice, aren't you? And I was like, well, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm about like, trying to be horrible. That's not yeah. the one that I think. <laughs> but, you know, we, again, it's, you know, what was that? That was conditioning from their parents. It wasn't necessarily them that were talking mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my entire life I've been different. And again, I think, and one, I think I now know that part of the, the breakdown, which actually was a total breakthrough, True, that's was about right. me living that different life and actually embracing that different life and saying, do you know what? Hey, this is how I wanted to be all the time, but I wasn't quite the version of me that I could have been because I was about pleasing everybody else. So now, you know, now that kind of it is fundamentally broken, well, we might as well start again and yeah. clean the way and, you know, and build the foundations of the person that I truly came here to become. That's and right. you know, she's the person that now lives here in full Technicolor every single day. Full Technicolor, not black and white. 
for no. Technicolor, no black and white TV. No, 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 no. it's all about Technicolor, you know, that's what we're here to do and it's about us just embracing that we are a human race mm -hmm. and exactly that we are here, a human race. here yeah. as a human race and mm -hmm. you know my grandma brought me up to to you know to to understand that every flower in the garden is a different color it's a different shape is a different size yeah. and she said claire the flowers in the garden are like people we're yeah. all different colors we're all different exactly. shapes we're all exactly. different sizes but you know fundamentally we're all here to do the same thing to you know yeah. to to, to give something back and to, to have a purpose in life that means that we give something to this beautiful earth that we live on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, this is, this is awesome. We're on the same path, Claire. I mean, and it is so amazing. And, and just like you said, I, I live in the hope that there are people, and I know, let me tell you, I know for a fact that there are people who are searching. It's amazing. You know, all the, all the things that, people feel that are that are important which is why things were taken away from you and, and things happen in your in your in your life and people fuss over that oh why me why me why no 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 it's why not me and what is the lesson i have to learn but i know for a fact that people are searching for themselves including myself including you and, yeah. and somebody might not understand what that means but I, I cannot explain it to anyone what searching for yourself is. I, it, it, yeah. it, it is not something that you could explain. It is a, a journey and you just have to go with the flow. Wherever, wherever you're taken, wherever the universe, God, spirit, source tell you to do, to go, you just, you just don't resist. You, it's you just think that you be. It's yeah, just, just be, be. Just yeah. go. Just yeah. go. Just, just don't worry. D don't, don't overthink don't even think just just do yeah <laughs> just be just do and just then be, it just all do. and 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 you're gonna you're gonna see if you're if you just let it go and that's where it starts just let it go and submit the point is to submit give yourself and submit say listen i get the white flag get the white flag i'm surrendering i'm submitting I'm yeah. not fighting, you know. You know it's, it's, it's so interesting because I think that um, whilst in, in some respects, you know, people think that they're just for kids. I think that there's so much that we can learn from Disney and, and, and the magic that, you know, that Disney brings in that, you know, when you, you talk about let it go kind of, you know, for me, I always go to Frozen now because my daughter watches it so often. Mm -hmm. And you think about the words of the the song and she says let it go let it go can't mm. hold it back anymore mm -hmm. let it go let it go walk away and slam the door here slam i stand it. in the slam light of the door let the storm <laughs> rage on the cold never bothered me anyway and you know she talks about um you know she she basically just talks about you know i've been you you look at the 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 moral of that story and it was the the fact that she was told by her parents hmm. to suppress the fact that she was different oh, wow. and to um you know and it was all about um it was all about hiding it conceal hmm. don't feel and wow. you know when you look at that as a message you know the, the great thing is that you know the whole story is about the fact that she does let it go mm -hmm. but it's something quite catastrophic that happens that makes that happen hmm. but you know when you think about that message that she was taught of conceal don't feel hmm. you know it's it, it we wonder why we've got so many mental health issues we wonder That's why right. people you know, are not members of people taking their own lives because they can't deal because they've been told to conceal not feel and, and this is, it. This is what, it. that's not what we came here for mm -hmm. you know we came here to live our most vibrant amazing oh, yeah and wild and unleashed life that's wild 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 and you said conceal don't feel and that is that is one of the things with narcissism as well they are, mm -hmm. they are told to suppress how they feel. I am going to think for you. Whatever I think is what you think. Whatever I feel is what you feel. You have no feelings. You have no brain. You have no mind. You have no nothing. And, and they are not allowed to be. And so, you know, I've, I've been in narcissistic relationships. I'm surrounded by them. Um, people like us are always surrounded by them. <laughs> we attract them into our lives because we are, we are the opposites of them on the same scale. Yeah. You know? And, um, 
you know, it's, I, I, I feel compassion. I can't help but feel compassion and love towards them because while I would want to hate and, and you know, get angry and, and for what they do, um, because it's really very painful, really very painful. Um, I have to look at them as, oh my God, you really don't understand what you're missing out. No, so, I, 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 your life is just so empty. You're just a shell. You're yeah. just a shell, heartless, no heart, no blood pumping through you. You're, you're like a vampire, you know, like when you watch those vampires that they crack open. You, you have no warmed blood, nothing. You're just a shell. And I find that so sad. And instead, yeah. of, instead of feeling hate and revenge, I, all I could do is give them more love with yeah. the hope, with the hope and a prayer clear that through God's grace, that yeah. something, something in me. And, you know, we are the kind that would, that we, we try to help everybody. We want to save everybody. We think we could cure everybody. But with the narcissists, we, well, they're uncurable, they say, but I believe, I believe in God's grace. Yeah. And he can change anything and anyone and turn anything around. And if I continue to give love, compassion, though from a distance, give love and compassion and continue to pray for you and, and just show you what, I mean, because they see what life and love is like when they see us, which is why they want yeah. to, which is why they want us, which is why they want to be like us. They want to, they want to suck us out, you know, it, it, yeah. it, <laughs> so that they and can have it. Yeah, and I, I actually, it, I, I'm, I've just picked up my phone to, to read something to you because I shared this message in my group last night. Um, and, it, and it was something, there's two things I'm going to say now. I'm going to say this one first and then I'm going to say the, the other one that has recently come to me and has just been so, um, oh, it's, it's just had so much resonance with me. And, and the thing that I shared last night with my group was I never knew who, how strong I was until I had to forgive someone who wasn't sorry and accept an apology I never received. And I think that's, that's the thing is, you know, with um, my sister-in-law, the, the very narcissistic one, you know, I forgive her, like you yeah. say, you know, actually I, I send her love because yeah. you know what? She can't even see the no. way that she, she can see the way that she's being, but she's so scared to break out of it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, she won't break out of it. And I think that, you know, to be able to forgive somebody when they have hurt you that much yeah. and for you to be able to walk away from it is such an empowering thing to do. Very powerful, very powerful. And, and then, you know, I read something recently and it was one of those kind of quotes that you, you know, when you read it and you kind of go back and you go, whoa, that's mm. deep. Yeah. And the quote was, if we don't heal the, if we don't heal the things that hurt us, yeah. we will bleed all over people that didn't cut us. Yeah. I saw that quote already. Yeah. And I just think that the power in that, in that, you know, especially with what we've talked about with the way that, you know, some of the things are happening on this planet, you know, if we don't actually deal with those hurts mm -hmm. and don't deal with what people have done to us, then we will continue to bleed all over people that didn't cut us. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's one of the biggest things about being, you know, an evolved being and actually, you know, being able to step back and say, yeah, you know, that wasn't the best decision I ever made or that wasn't the greatest way that I dealt with this. Mm -hmm. But this is what I learned from it. And yeah. so as a result of that, I've become a better person. Yeah. And now this is about me consciously not bleeding all over people that actually have done nothing to me. Yeah, yeah. Claire, I want to jump to your website. We have been talking for a while. I tell you, I'm supposed to be doing 30 minutes on this show, and I never do 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's I good never, stuff. <laughs> I never do 30 minutes. And I... I, I can't, oh. <laughs> I so enjoy talking to you guys. Oh my god. Let me let me see if I can grab a page here. Tell me your website. So it's um the real uh, T H R E T H E R E A L C T M dot com. Yes. Yay! 
Oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. Hold on, let me see. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're so beautiful. Let me share that. So there you are. Clear with a star. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You are absolutely gorgeous. Oh my God. <laughs> Don't let anybody tell you otherwise, Claire. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. You are absolutely gorgeous. So this is you living your limitless life. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So let's let's learn a little bit. Oh, there's a different color of hair here. Yeah. It's actually the same. It was just in a different light. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what do you have on your website here? Are you doing any giveaways, anything that people can grab? Uh, no, but what I do, because I, to be perfectly honest, I've just created a new one and I haven't put it on there yet. So um, I can share a link with you of, um, of what I've got. So there's, there's a few things that people can do to kind of get involved. Um, I've got a lovely little um, abundant life visualization that I created just last week. Yeah. Um, for my um, for my my followers, yeah. um, and I've also got an amazing group um, which is called um, Becoming Unincorporated Being You, and is simply there, Kareen. There's there's thousands of groups that we can go on on Facebook that are all about um, building your business, doing yeah. this, doing all that sort of thing. And what I know from experience and sharing with you what I've shared today has literally been the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Um, you know, I know that as women, we need support. We need self-care. We need to love oh, ourselves. Of course. And my group is completely all about um, actually helping women to be themselves. It's about a safe space where you can come and talk about stuff that is going on for you. Um, and, and it's kind of the lead up to, and, and I'm kind of letting out a real um, nugget here because you're just seeing it there in January. <laughs> Yeah. I am going to be launching the Wild Woman Tribe. And the Wild Woman Tribe is my vibe tribe that is there to support and empower women to be themselves. You need so, to send me that link so I can join that tribe because I'm the I one. I will send you a link to that as well um, where people can sign up to um, getting onto the list of that and hearing what's coming next. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, basically, it's super exciting um, and it's about us being wild being unleashed and living our most purposeful and momentous life this is me. that's what we came here to do this is and me this is me this yes is me. and there's too much focus on your business on this on yes, that and no. you know what we don't give ourselves space to be women so um the wild woman tribe is that space there's going to be talks from other amazing women there's going to be online meetups every single month. Um, there's going to be daily messages to keep you in a really great vibration every single day. Um, and yet yeah, it's just going to be a haven of support and a totally non-judgmental safe place for you to come and vibe your vibe. Very good. Just be you. Be you. Absolutely be, be you. you. And, and if you don't know who you are, then we can help you discover who you really are. Totally. Be. Totally. I do one to one as well. So if people are looking for some, and you know, the, well, I say people, the ladies especially, are yeah. looking for the support about having that absolute one to one support about being their most unleashed self and wanting a guide to help them to do that, then I've got some slots available for that at the moment as well. Wonderful. Wonderful. Lovely sight. Lovely sight. I mean, this, this, I want to come back here. Let me see here. This, resonates with me a lot where was i oh it's on roll i think is it that one yeah, yes. how I roll. yeah this resonates with me and i'll tell you why so that we can end off the show because i have learned about myself just like you have learned about yourself as a light worker i have learned about myself as a very empathetic individual and so are you and mm -hmm. we would have persons who we don't get along with throughout our life up to this point we are like why that person wouldn't like me why would that person think that <laughs> you know and you have difficulty in relationships and um it happens because people 
resist you and you also, your spiritual being just does not connect with everyone. And we have to recognize that we don't have to connect with everyone and that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. And there is an, and I like the, 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 the look in terms of the Indian, the wild woman tribe, the Indian, um, what do you call yeah. that? Uh, Amerindian type, yeah. because I am connected to this tribe. <laughs> ah. I am connected to this tribe very much so um, there's a term called Heyoka you may have discovered that I don't know yes hey yeah. yes and I've discovered I'm part of or one of those um, and I've accepted that which is wow. the, highest, the highest form of empath um, so I'm making that public not to, not to brag or anything because it comes with a lot of heartache it comes yeah. with a lot of responsibilities. It comes with a, a lot of a lot of pain. Yeah, it does um, because you take it on. I'm exactly the same. You know, I can. Yeah. I I, I take on the energy of where I go. Me too. Um, Me too. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's like not, say, it's, it can be quite. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a it's a, it's a it's a it's a. I wouldn't call it a burden. I nearly said a burden. No. It's a burden. Mm -hmm. But it can be burdensome if you don't know. And as I'm on the spiritual journey, I've learned to manage it and I'm still learning to manage it and create boundaries. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are not, and it, you see, it comes back to being aware and conscious. If I wasn't taken on that spiritual journey, and I tell you, that search to find yourself will lead you to some places you, <laughs> you, you really never expect. Doesn't it <laughs> <laughs> you really never expect and it, it, it's just one surprise after another my dear it's just one yes. surprise and that is the exciting thing about it to discover and it feels really good to discover who you are yes. and and you're still searching you're still looking because you're, you 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 want to know more you want to know more and when i discovered this i was like whoa now i understand why as a young child, I always used to watch these movies and I, I, I always was caught up in the, in the tradition and the way they live. And I was like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> I am so connected to these people and I, I, I love open land and, and, and this whole sort of reservation living and <laughs> just being out in the wild. You know, I, yeah. I could, and I'm like, whoa. Uh, one with no earth and nature, which is what we came here to be. I made that, I said that sentence. I want to be one with nature. And yeah. I was just looked like I was crazy. I was among two, two guys I was sitting, sitting down. Young, very young teenager, I'm telling you. And I said, oh my God, I, I want to be one with nature. And they looked at me and laughed. And that came back to me the other day, that sentence that I said to them. And I was like, Oh my God, look how everything is connecting. Look how they didn't understand. Of course they couldn't. They're not there. But no. I knew what, at that point, I didn't know what I meant. In the sense, I just know how I felt. And yeah. I just felt I wanted to be one with yeah. nature. And I said it. After that, I can't remember saying it otherwise. But no, that just came back to me in a rush. Do you remember you said that? I'm like, whoa, look at, wow. People, please take the journey of me. Take the journey of me. It is worth it. It is worth discovering yourself. You will realize all the things that you've been attracting. You know, you don't need it. You don't need it. You need to shed. You need to let go. Do like the frozen thing in the movie. Let it go. Let, let it, it go. go. Let it go. Totally. Thank you so much, Claire Turner Marshall. CTM unplugged. <laughs> there is no plug. <laughs> no, not anymore. <laughs> Just like in, in the Matrix, there is no spoon. When no. when when Neo came in and he's like, "How are you doing that?" The little boy said, "There is no spoon." Yeah. You know, <laughs> there is no plug. There is no, no nothing. You, it's all about what you see and what your mind, it, 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 it's, it's a movie playing out and you can create the movie that you want. Everything Absolutely. you see is not real. No. Oh. And everything is on the other side of fear. You've just got to let it go and yes. go for it. Everything. Because you never know what's going to happen. And, you know, 
I, I will finish on this. If the universe had sat me down seven years ago and said, Claire, this is what's going to happen in the next seven years, then I would have said, um, yeah, yeah, you've got the wrong lady. Like, that's not me. I can't deal with that. Like, no, I did, I'm flattered <laughs> that, you that I could. I have to say I'm honoured that you've come to me and I'm flattered. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, no, you just seriously got the wrong lady. Yeah, and yet, I'll tell you. Years later, I sit here yeah. so much happier than I've ever been in my entire life. But I will um, tell you, Claire, I will tell you. Very I'll tell you there. The, the people in the Bible, and it always come back to me with Moses. Moses used to stutter. Mo Moses couldn't speak. He wasn't eloquent. He, <laughs> a crooked stick a man who stutters and he was able to move and free people out of Egypt. Yeah. When God selected him, you think he said yes? He said, yeah. look here, you got a wrong guy. Yeah. Wrong guy. Sorry, not me. All the people in the Bible, you think they just jumped up and said yes? Yeah. They said, no, 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 sorry. You know, there's a guy next door. There's a guy next door. He is the perfect person. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, no, 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 it's you. It's you. Like, you it's sure? me. <laughs> really? And then, and, then, and then when God gets kind of tired of you, you know, of you kind of saying no, he's like, hello, it's you. And he yeah. gets very stern, it's you. Yeah. It's you. It's <laughs> Just get on you. with it. <laughs> <laughs> you really realize I have no choice in this thing. Um, yeah, I've just got to do it. Okay, I, I'm listening. Okay. I've got it, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So whatever you are going through, and, and let me tell you, these people in the Bible went through a lot, and they question God. So all the challenges that we go through, it's nothing, it's nothing um, new. Yeah. Right. This is this is this is, has been done biblically. Why do you think it's something new? When you have lost everything, you know whatever they have lost, they have lost. They have gone without food, water, heat, whatever, home. In, so I mean, it's not new. And how did they survive it? Through the universe, through God, through source, through just having that faith and trust, and just yeah. believing in themselves that. If, if, I am, if I'm given this mantle, this baton to carry, this basket, and God said, this is what it is. He's going to carry you. He's going to give you the means. He's not going to give you something and he doesn't provide the means. Never. No. Never. No. So if you're in something and you're there, just believe. Just trust. Just have the faith. You're going to get through it. Wow, Claire. I don't know what you look like seven years or how much years ago, but you're more beautiful today than seven years ago. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Bless you, beautiful lady. Well, uh, you know, it takes one to know one. Look at yeah. you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so yeah, much. Hey, I've, only, I've, I've just been looking at this beautiful photograph of you. I haven't been able to see you today, but no. I'm just sitting here going, wow. So, <laughs> hey, right you. back at you, lady. Right back yeah. at you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being on Between the Lines. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for having me. Yes. And I am so thankful that you have discovered and you have had the will and you made the choice yeah. to follow what your, your spirit told you to do. And you realize that beyond fear is much, much better. It's magic beyond it's fear. It's magic. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. Bye-bye.